In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. In the Gospel of John, there is a wonderful account before the Lord's Passion and Crucifixion. When certain Greeks are coming to the city of Jerusalem to celebrate. They're coming to celebrate the Passover. And Philip is standing there, and these Greeks come up to Philip and say, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip begins talking to the other disciples, and Christ begins to continue to preach. But this is the desire of these Greeks that came to the Passover. This is the desire of all the prophets to see Christ. Their hearts have been inscribed with prophecies about Him. The law has said what He will be. And this is the greatest desire of all humanity, is to see Christ. But the world wants to whisper different things into our ears. You don't need to look for Christ. Go seek something else. Because when we see Christ, that's what we see. We see the crucified Lord. And this is why Christ warns the disciples. When people wish to see Him, He tells them, I am the Son of Man, I am the Son of God. But we are going to Jerusalem not to celebrate an old Passover, but to create a new Passover where not just the angel of death passes over certain houses, but where the Son of God encounters death, goes into the depths of death, and destroys death's power with death. He wants to make sure that those who wish to see Him, see Him for who He truly is. And what's amazing in today's Gospel, is the person that desires to see Him is the one that can't see anything at all. You know, the fathers of the church tell us there's two lies that the demons whisper into our ears. And they're completely opposite. But there's two lies. And those two lies that they tell us, number one, you're already a saint. You're already holy. You're good. And we know we're not. That's why we're in church today. Because we know we're not saints. We know we're not holy. We know that one is holy. One is Lord Jesus Christ to the glory of God the Father. But He desires to be inside of us to strengthen us to become holy. That's the first lie that the demons whisper. The other lie is the opposite. You'll never be holy. You'll never be a saint. So don't even try. And we know from many countless stories of the lives of the saints that this couldn't be further from the truth. But if we believe either one of those, we're far away from the kingdom. And this is what the people were whispering into the ears of that blind man. Don't bother Jesus. He doesn't have time for you. He's off to do some more important things. Why would he want to mess with you, blind man? You see, the devil whispers. Sometimes the devil screams really loud. But the majority of the time, he's whispering to try to take our attention off of Christ. And believe me, my brothers and sisters in Christ, He uses things that don't always seem to be evil. That's why He's so tricky. He is the great deceiver. If He's great at anything, the devil is great at deceiving. You can say, I have my smartphone. I use it to use the daily readings and read Bible stories. That's good. But if that same smartphone, after you close one app, opens another app that leads you away from Christ, it's not worth it. Get the Bible out. 
use a book. If going to do something good causes us to be prideful after having done it, we've lost the glow that Christ has placed inside of us. The devil whispers, but our Lord cries, come to me. Our Lord cries to me, I don't want to judge you. I want to save you. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And that blind man, even though he couldn't see, he put aside all the whisperings of the people and cried out, not Jesus of Nazareth. That's what they told him. That's who they told him was arriving. It would be like saying, Suhail from Pasadena is coming to town. Okay, that's nice. But what he says is, Jesus, son of David, save me and have mercy on me. He doesn't just recognize Jesus' earthliness. He realizes without seeing that this person that is coming into Jericho is the son of David, the one that's been prophesied about for many years for many decades, for many centuries. And he latches onto him. And there's a pretty powerful sentence. What does Jesus do? Jesus who is ever creating, ever flowing with energy. It says, Jesus stopped. Jesus stopped. Our Lord desires to stop for us. But do we allow him the opportunity to do so? He's ready to stop. If he's ready to die on a cross, he's definitely ready to stop for us. But so many times we are not ready to stop for him. And it's not that Jesus passes by us, but we pass by Christ. Because we're not willing to let go of the things that keep us from him. We would rather listen to the whisperings. And this is why on this Sunday, what are we getting ready to sing? One of the most beautiful hymns. Let us be like the angels. Let us lay aside all earthly cares that we may receive the King of all. It's beautiful. The liturgy is very functional. It's not just a ceremony. It's to remind us what we need to do inside so that we can do it outside. Because it's a lot harder outside. As difficult as it is sometimes to stay awake, to pay attention in church, we have to struggle to do it here so that when there's a lot more noise on the outside, we can continue to try and struggle to do it there. Because Christ is walking by us all the time. And He's willing to stop. But we have to be willing to lay aside our earthly cares and listen to His commandments and to cry out like that blind man when Christ asks us, what do you want? Christ is ready to help us. And the blind man says, that I may have sight. But please, my brothers and sisters in Christ, don't think that Christ is just a genie to fulfill our wishes. When he says that I may receive sight, it's not just so that he can see what's going on around him. It's so that he can recognize the person that he's been crying out for. And this is what the scary thing in the gospel is, is that the blind man was the one who recognized Christ. Our church is our home. And I wish I could tell you all, all you have to do is get in some water and have some oil put on your head and you'll be saved for the rest of your life. But there are many people outside the doors of this church that act more like Christ does than sometimes we do. And we can learn from them. Our faith is not supposed to blind us. Our faith is to give us a more clear understanding of our crucified Lord, who died for all of salvation, who loves creation, and desires not our death, but that we turn that we turn to Him for salvation. But when we turn to Him, we turn to Him on not on our terms. And that's why we have to lay aside all earthly cares. May we, as we continue this divine liturgy, today, 
today at this moment, lay aside those things, those voices that are whispering falsities inside of our mind. Let us lay aside all those cares that we may have that are distracting us from focusing on the one true thing, and that is to cry out, Lord, save me. May our good God, who opened the eyes of the blind man, open our eyes, our hearts, and our minds to always see him for who he truly is and desire to that good God be glory forever and ever.